So I should have started recording these videos a couple of hours ago, but I went down a rabbit hole playing this video game for a couple of hours, and I actually used that rabbit hole to spark the idea for this video uh, to teach you where Matt and I get some of our inspirations. So with that said, I'm Dylan Barr. Welcome to the Unfound Anamnesis. If you're tuning in, you are following our YouTube channel where we take you behind the scenes in the world that we are creating for a self-published comic series that my partner, Matt Emery, and I are putting out in the new year. So we've been putting out content now for almost a month. We have over a thousand views on YouTube. If you're watching this, like, subscribe, comment. That really helps the algorithm. Uh, we have over a thousand views though, which is awesome. Uh, things are kind of rolling along. You guys, We've taken you behind the scenes and how we create the world. We've taken you behind the scenes and shown you some of our characters and their background. You're learning about the lore of Bastunia. The last couple of weeks, I've been talking about the lore of the entire cosmos, right? So I always say picture down here, we have Bastunia, the world that you're going to be living in and seeing in the comic that's coming out soon. And then up here, you have the cosmos or the universe of the unfound anamnesis where the god of Bastunia, Boom 2, um, really started his journey. So M Matt, you've heard from my partner, Matt, he's done Unfound Inspirations. Uh, Unfound Inspirations is basically him doing book reviews, telling you um, what he's learned in a philosophical, scientific book that he's read that is way over my head personally, but he's able to grasp and get it out in layman's terms, right? He uses that as an inspiration to he will be writing the prose. He'll actually be writing out each chapter of our comic so you can read it if you want to. Now, I want to do Unfound Inspirations as well. However, I don't read that thick of books. I am the layman. Um, so I'm reading Unfound Inspirations uh, in a different way. I'm going to tap into the inspirations that I've used through anime that I've watched in the past, comics that I've read in the past, or in this video, video games that I'm addicted to. Uh, I grew up, I think the first game that I played was on N64. I was a Star Fox guy. From there, it was PlayStation. I've always been PlayStation over Xbox. Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy ruled my life for most of high school and early college. Um, and now the game that I'm obsessed with is Overwatch. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how we've used Overwatch uh, to fuel and help us color uh, the world of the unfound anamnesis. So what I'm going to actually do is I put together a, a PowerPoint presentation so you don't have to see me the entire time. I'm going to share my screen for you. And I'm going to tell you how Overwatch, now Overwatch 2, has inspired the unfound anamnesis. But before I do that, we should probably get you a little bit up to speed. We've talked about Bastunia, but right now we're talking about this cosmic presence of the unfound anamnesis. And at a cosmic scale, there's a great war going on between good and evil, between light and dark, or what we say between found and lost planets. On the side of the found, you have what we call arcs. Arcs are, arcs is short for architect. They are these cosmic beings that have this power to create existence, tapping into this celestial presence called essence. They communicate with essence and use essence to create life so essence can learn lessons. And it learns lessons in planets called the found planets. And on the side of the lost, you have what we call the Azigra. The Azigra's sole job is to tear down the fabric of order. They want to plunge the world into chaos. They don't want essence to be born knowing it's trying to learn its lessons um, while it's on these planets. And the arcs are fighting this battle to both create life for essence and now ward off this dark presence of the Azigra. And what's happening is the arcs are reaching their wits end. Uh, they're also just reaching their a limit. They're reaching a breaking point and they're about to snap. They're in charge of creating reality, which we talked about in our last video. If you haven't watched it, uh, go back and check it out. They're creating re reality for every being on every planet in every galaxy 
while also trying to ward off the azigra. It's hard to do. So they have an idea. They say, hey, uh, we need some goddamn support. So what if we were to communicate with the essence and ask it to learn lessons, which we will use to formulate beings called Sajinta beings and then Sagia beings. These beings not only will be here to learn lessons, but will they will also help us fight this cosmic war. Now, a lot of you probably uh, listened to that the last couple of weeks and were like, what the fuck are you talking about, Dylan? Uh, so that is why I'm going to use Overwatch, and in this case, Overwatch 2, to show you what I mean by arcs, Sagenta beings, and Insagia beings used to ward off the oncoming threat of the Azigra. So what is Overwatch 2? Well, it's a video game with a pretty cool premise. The premise is a fictitious Earth 60 years in the future that is in the middle of a war itself called the Omnic War. People of this Earth created AI um, that became sentient, and a lot of the AI spread peace throughout the world with its sentience, and some of the AI used its powers for evil. Overwatch is a band of heroes from around the world that get together to fight off the Omnic Presence. And of course, they go into a bunch of different twists and turns, and we're slowly learning some of the lore as the video game comes out. Um, it's not an RPG, so they kind of drip information um, as the video game progresses. But the video game itself is actually a first-person shooter where teams are divided up into teams of five, um, where each team has to band together um, to defeat the other team and push payloads across different maps. Um, now, there's a bunch of different characters you can play as, but the main thing to realize is there are three different types of characters. And we're going to talk about those characters and how they relate to Unfound Anamnesis right now. The first type of character are tanks, right? Tanks, if you look on the left side of this, they're the, pe they're the, the, the characters that lead the charge. There's only one tank on a team of five. This is a big, bulky type character that leads the charge into battle. Their job is to take damage and to shell out damage, right? And they're basically saying, hey, look at me, look at me. The other team is shooting down the tanks, and it's up to the other teammates to keep that tank alive because that tank has the highest HP, the highest hit points, right? So it needs support to stay alive. They're the bulky ones. They're leading the charge. Now, if we go back, the arcs, talked to Essence and said, we need some of you to create beings called Sajinta beings. So think of Sajinta beings as the tanks of this cosmic war. They're the frontline warriors for the found. When the Zigra attack, it's Sajinta beings job to go out and be the soldiers that meet them head on, tear them limb from limb, um, to defend the found planets, the found galaxies. They take damage, they shell out damage, they need support to stay alive. Those are the tanks. The second type of um, character is what we call support characters. Support characters is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Their job is to support teammates. Their job is to sustain the fight. They keep topping off um, the other ca uh, characters on their team so their hit points stay high, so they need more damage, so they can stay in the battle longer, so they have more chance to kill the other team, right? Their job is to stay, sustain the fight, to heal, and to not die. Their job is to stay in the background, heal, and not die as much as possible, right? Now, if we go back to the arcs, talking to the great essence, the other thing that they need is they need beings that they call insagia beings. And Sagia beings are the healers in the Great War. So you have Sajinta beings leading the charge and then Sagia beings really picking up the rear and sustaining the, um, the Sajinta beings, healing them. And if any, um, uh, any tears in reality happen, right? If the Azigra are able to rip through reality, it's the Sagia beings job to basically stitch reality back up. And 
Finally, you have DPS, the damage, it actually stands for damage per second. Their job is to create space. They basically get to run around, they make impact without really having the attention, and they're the sexy characters. They're the ones that are always saying, I'm not getting heals, I need to do my job, I need to get more kills. Like it's most, most fun role is to be a damage role. I um, mean, the other people kind of get to just do the, a lot of damage characters, a lot of damage players just get to yell at the other characters. Very similar to the arcs uh, in the Great War. The arcs are in the background. They create reality instead of space. Uh, they make an impact without the attention and they're the sexy ones, right? They're the ones communicating with essence and creating reality while the Sajinta beings and the Insagia beings are really uh, protecting them and allowing them to do their job. That right now is the arcs uh, main strategy point to win the cosmic war. Um, it was inspired by Overwatch. I started playing Overwatch uh, basically a year after it came out. Um, we're going to bring other parts of the Overwatch lore into into the comics. You'll probably see when we get into the the universe of the Unfound Anamnesis, the Insagia beings have their own little turrets that they use to sustain reality, similar to Symmetra's turrets in Overwatch. Um, Zenyatta has its his orbs that are around his neck. You'll see that hybrids, which we're going to talk about in future videos, have something similar that we call the Phara that they use at their disposal as their weapons. Um, it's going to be fun. I'm super excited to bring uh, the Unfound Anamnesis to you all and to use what I have been taking so much joy in and things like Overwatch and comics uh, and, and use that knowledge to create the Unfound Anamnesis for not only myself, but also for you. We want to hear from you all. What are your thoughts? Are you an Overwatch fan? If so, who's your favorite character? Drop it in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What could we use uh, to make this world even sexier from something that you um, have been, you know, falls deep in is the word I want to use, <laughs> whether it's comics, whether it's anime, whether it's movies, tell us your thoughts. We'd love to use that to create our world of the unfound anamnesis. That being said, I'm Dylan. In the next video, we're going to talk about um, what the arcs have to do when even this strategy doesn't work, how the hybrids come into play. I'll see you in the next video.